Good morning, dear friends, and welcome back to Relab with Miss Cope. Today is Monday, and it's May 4th. We are now reading It Ain't So Awful Falafel, so let's get back to it. Knock Knock is the title of the chapter. It's the third night in our condo, and my mom and dad and I are doing what we do every night. Sitting on the sofa, eating dinner, and watching a comedy. We know the shows are comedies because when every one of the actors said something, people laughed. Of course, we don't understand why half the stuff is funny, and that's where I come in. My job is to look up the words in the Webster's Dictionary. Lucky me. But why is it hilarious if someone calls you a turkey? And I ran. You want to make fun of someone, you call him a donkey. Now that's funny. We're lucky if we understand three or four funny lines out of an entire show in America. Sometimes we just laugh along with the audience for the sake of it. We're at the end of the three company, three's company when someone knocks on our door. Counting our landladies, the movers, and the two nice women who wanted to help us find the Lord is only the fourth time anyone has come to our new house. All three of us scramble to answer it. As soon as I look through the peephole and see that it's somebody my age, I tell my parents to go back to the sofa. There is something that could come out of their mouths that would not be embarrassing. I open the door and a girl says, hi, I'm Cindy. We're neighbors. I freeze. Of all the names in the United States of America, her name has to be Cindy. What are the chances? I mean, that's my name. Let me explain. Zomorod is not a good name here. It translates to emerald in Persian. But does anyone care? No. My dad wants to name me, wanted to name me Sarah, which would have made my life a million times easier. I mean, whose name starts with a Z? Nobody on this planet who counts. It's clunky and loopy and Ever since second grade, when Bill Garrett made the O's in my name into eyeballs, I realized that having three O's in one name is possibly even weirder than having it start with a Z. But my problems don't stop there. Ever since third grade, I've wanted one of those Wild West belt buckles at the Nadi's Berry Farm with my name on it. Of course, they don't have the Marod. I always look anyway, just in case. Sure, they have Zelda. Zelena and Zoe, but not Zamarod. Ever. They have Sarah and Sarah with an H. In my third grade class, Heather had one. So did Connie, Karen, Holly. Holly had the belt buckle, bracelet, and keychain. My dad says, I should just get one that says Foxy Lady on it. I am 100% sure he doesn't know what Foxy means. <laughs> Then, on the first day of our gym in fifth grade, Mr. Knopf said my name was like an alphabet train that keeps going and going and going. Everyone laughed and the boys started chanting, choo, 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 choo. They continued to do this whenever they saw me for the whole year. Mr. Knopf asked if I had a nickname. Iranians don't have nicknames. Bobby Henderson makes everyone call him Scooter. How do you get Scooter from Bobby? And why would anybody want to be called a Scooter? Mr. Knopf's PE class of honors is just a small sample of my misery. Really. misery. Anytime I met a new kid, it's a nightmare. This is how it goes. Cool person. Hi, what's your name? Me. The Marad Yusuf said I. Cool person. Stepping back, looking scared. What kind of name is that? Me. Being extra cheerful and not scary. I'm from Iran. Cool person. Looking more scared. Where's that? Me, having to be a Miss History and Geography teacher, which I hate. You might know Iran as Persia. It's named, it's named until 1935. It's right between Ir Iraq and Afghanistan. It would be so much cooler to say it's near the Norwegian gourds or anywhere near Italy or France or Japan or Africa. Cool person, looking scared and confused. Where is that? Ad nauseum. <laughs> so 
So when I found out we were moving to Newport Beach, I knew this was my chance to break the cycle of embarrassment. I decided to change my name. I mean, what is a name anyway? In English, you say a table. In Persian, I say mez. They are the same thing. If I were being logical, I guess I could have called myself Emerald, but that would just be switching one weird person name from one weird American name. So I chose the most normal American name I knew. Cindy, like Cindy Brady from the Brady Bunch. It's not like I'm trying to pretend I'm not Iranian. I just want people to ask questions about me when we meet, not about where I'm from. Why does that matter anyway? Yes, there are a few differences between me and another kid in America, but these are the main ones. One, I speak Persian at home. Two, the only pet I have ever owned is a goldfish. And then at the bottom of the page, it says, note to God. Next time, please make me be from one of those places I just mentioned. We're still on two. I realize that goldfish are a sad excuse for a pet. Since you cannot hold them, walk them, train them, or do anything fun at all. Worst of all, they never act like they like you, no matter what you do for them. Three, my mom does not know how to make oatmeal raisin cookies. And four, all my friends are in books. So, <clears throat> so now you see why I'm standing frozen at the door <clears throat> as Cindy introduces herself. Why does the first person my age that I meet in Newport Beach have to have my new name? I considered saying my name is something else, but it took me a long time to think of Cindy. And frankly, I have not thought of a backup name. Also, when someone tells you your name, you only have a few seconds to tell her, tell her yours. So I smiled and said, nice to meet you. I'm Cindy too. Oh my God, she says, we're both Cindy. That's so cool. So cool, I repeat it. You wanna come over and hang out, she asked. I live right next door, even though it's getting late. I cannot pass up this opportunity to make a friend. Yeah, I say. I never say yes, just yeah. All drawn out and slow, like molasses. As Mrs. Sumba, the librarian, described it. That's one reason I sound so American. That and I know a lot of slang. When I tell my parents I'm going to the neighbor's house, they said, Zamarod, wait. Why is it funny to throw a pie in someone's face? <laughs> Look it up, I tell them, and I walk out the door. Love will keep us together. New chapter. Original Cindy's condo is like ours, except they have matching furniture and real plants, so it looks much better. Her parents must be in their room because I don't see them. We go straight up to her room, which is red and white with tons of photos of her horse magic. This is the first time I have ever seen framed pictures of a horse all over someone's house. People usually have framed photos of other people. Baby photos, wedding photos, Disneyland photos, all with humans. That's what I expect to see. In Iran, we also have framed pictures of elderly relatives who have died. It's usually not a photo from when they were really, really old and didn't look as good, but old enough so you know they were old. I'm really into the horseback riding, original Cindy explains. I've never been horseback riding, so I don't know what to say, I nod. That's the good thing about nodding. It lets you say nothing while still saying, staying in the conversation. I also have an older brother, two kittens, a lizard, and a dog. My kittens are Captain and Tenno, she says. They're named after my favorite band that plays my favorite song, Love Will Keep Us Together. Do you like that song, she asks. And nod is no longer enough. Oh yeah, I say. I've never heard that song. My lizard's name is Eddie. My dog's name is Mick Jagger. <laughs> My brother, Mark, named him that because he loves Mick Jagger. You should see his room. There's like four huge posters of Mick on the wall. Who's Mick Jagger, I asked. You don't know who Mick Jagger is? Original Sydney explains, acting like I just asked her who Mickey Mouse is, who I'm pretty sure is the more famous Mick of the two. Hello, hello? Have you heard of the Rolling Stones? And their lead singer, Mick Jagger? He is really, really famous, maybe the most famous singer in the world. She says, stretching her arms out, trying to show me how big the world really is. Since I now have a normal name, I don't worry that she thinks it's odd that I don't know the world's most popular singer. 
class, we have already agreed that we have the same favorite song. If I were using a real clunky name and I didn't know who Mick Jagger was, that would be strange. Being Cindy makes me so much more normal. Next chapter. <clears throat> Buy three, get one free. The next day, original Sydney and I go to the condo pool. I take the key, which is now attached to a keychain, with two bulldogs sitting in a boat, holding fishing rods and drinking beer. On the side of the boat, it says, a bad day. Fishing is better than a good day at the office. We don't fish on a dog or drink beer, but the keychain was on sale at the Sav Savon Drugstore. That's also why we have four rolls of blue wrapping paper decorated with pacifiers and it's a boy all over it but buy three get one free as I'm leaving my mom yells from the living room don't lose the pool key in Persian and again I'm probably saying the Persian all wrong I'm doing my best here the pool is pretty big and even has a twisty slide all around it. There are chairs with backs that go up and down so you can choose whether to lie down and get a tan or sit up and talk while you get a tan. There are also tables and chairs, an outdoor shower, a changing area, and a barbecue, but there aren't that many people at the pool. Original Sydney says that a lot of our neighbors use the private pool at Newport Beach Tennis Club, which is for playing members only. I don't understand why anyone would play to pay to go to a pool when there's already a free one here. That's what my dad calls flushing money down the toilet. Right here is good, original Sydney says, choosing one of the lounge chairs. We can get maximum, maximum sun exposure. I lie on my back just like she does facing the sun. Immediately my eyeballs feel like they're burning. A few minutes pass and then original Sydney starts telling me stories about her horse. If I didn't know magic was an animal, animal I think she was talking about a person. The first time I saw magic, she begins, I knew she was the one. She goes on to tell me in detail how she and magic learned to become friends, what happens the first time she cried in front of magic, and how they practically speak a secret language. After an hour of the horse stories, or original Sydney finally stops. I miss magic so much, she, she sighs. When did you last visit her, I asked. Yesterday, she replies. Magic is also so happy to see me. Do you feed her? Of course, I always have treats. Maybe that's why she's so happy to see you, I suggest trying to be helpful. You know the dancing seals at SeaWorld? It's not like they want to wear a tutu and hop around in circles, but they do it for the fish. Animals would do anything for food. No, that's not it at all, original Sydney suddenly sits up. Please do not compare my horse to a stinky seal. Magic and I have a bond, a connection. Maybe it's hard for you to understand because you've never loved a horse. I panic. My one and only friend in Newport Beach is mad at me. I have to say something meaningful. I do know about humans and horses being friends. I absolutely love Pippi Longstocking. Who? She asks lying back down. You know, that book about the little girl who lives alone with her father. Well, her father is lost at sea and she has a horse and a monkey and... Is that a true story? Original Sydney asked before I can finish. No, not at all. Pippi is an imaginary character. She's like 10 years old and lives alone. She can lift up her horse with one hand. As I am saying this, I realize that this conversation is not helping me connect with my only friend. It's a stupid story, I say, never mind. Yeah, original Sydney agrees, sounds stupid. But you know what is not stupid? Black beauty. Now, this is a touching story told by a horse and not at all stupid. What is it about? It's about this horse who tells you his life story, first as a colt and then as a workhorse, which is really hard because he lives in London a long time ago when they didn't treat them very well. A talking horse who wrote a book, she says. No, thank you. No, that's not it, I reply. But it doesn't matter since it's obvious that talking about books with original Sydney is not a good idea. Hey, I begin trying to change the subject. Wanna go swim? Swim, she says, as if I have suggested something totally unacceptable to do in a pool. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want. 
You mean get our hair wet? She asked. No. How about we swim without getting our hair wet? I suggest. Not even sure why I'm saying that. I guess she sits up and ties her hair into a bun so it doesn't touch the water. My hair is short. Not that I should care if it get, got wet. We go in the pool up to our necks and walk from one side to the other, then back again. Chins held up high, straining to keep our heads out of the water. Hey, you know what we look like, I asked? What? You know those African women in National Geographic who wear stacks of neck rings to see their, so their necks get really long? No. She climbs out of the pool, bringing our time spent in the water to a total of five minutes. Apparently, pools in Newport Beach are used only as tanning destinations. We reapply coconut-scented suntan lotion and turn, over a turn our lounge chairs a few degrees for maximum sun exposure, like human sunflowers. After a while, Original Sydney suggests we lie on our stomachs to even out our color on both sides. Great idea, I say, realizing with a growing horror that no matter how many times I blink, I have no moisture left in my eyes. All of a sudden, I remember my dad's warning about staring into the sun during eclipses and going instantly blind. Is this the same thing? I close my eyes and try to think sad thoughts so I might cry and get some tears in my eyes, but I can't concentrate because original Sydney is going on and on about another stupid horse story. After what feels like five lifetimes, I hear her say the glorious words, we should go now. Yeah, I say jumping up but trying not to seem too excited. And you know what? We should totally work on our tans a lot, she suggested as she folds her towel, which surprise, surprise, has a picture of a horse on it. I've never heard the phrase, work on our tans. I puzzle over it for a minute. Where's the work in that? You just lie there like a steak on a grill. Yeah, we totally should, I finally said. In Compton, I went to a pool party once and there was a sign that said, we don't swim in your toilet. Please don't pee in our pool. I translated the sign for my mom and she said it was rude to have a sign with the word pee on it. I told her that's what made it funny. She insisted it wasn't funny at all. That's the hard part with translating. Saying what words mean is easy, but trying to make my mom understand why something is funny is much harder. Getting my mom to laugh in America is nearly possible. All right, we're gonna end it there. It looks like Sydney, now Cindy, because she changed her name, met a new friend, but I think they're having a little trouble connecting. So we'll see what happens next. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great Monday. Welcome back. I hope you work hard today. Thanks for watching and toodles everyone.